This is Matt for Into Boxing. I'm delighted to be joined, I think for the first time, by David Higgins. David, we're here. Joseph Parker Fight Week. Big Joe Joyce. It's a good matchup this, isn't it? It's a cracker of a matchup. People say a 50-50 fight. Both guys are pros and cons, so, um, you know, it'll be awesome for the fans. Do you think people are, for some reason, overlooking Joseph a little bit in this fight? I hear a lot of people talk about um, the juggernaut and how you need almost a sledgehammer to put him to sleep, but do you think people are underestimating um, Parker into this fight? You know, he's a former world champion, um, he's got terrific hand speed, movement, power. Do you think people are overlooking him just slightly? Yeah, I do, actually. I think the bookies, the betting agencies favour Joyce a bit. I think Joyce's team probably believe the hype that Joyce is invincible and I think Parker's the dark horse here and 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 there are many attributes Parker has that are superior to Joe Joyce not least the the hand speed the fleet footedness the veteran experience at the highest level going 12 rounds with Carlos Takam, Andy Ruiz Jr, Anthony Joshua, Dillian White, Derek Chisora twice Joyce hasn't gone 12 rounds with anyone of that ilk. So, um, and then Parker's on the up. You know, he's settled in with a new trainer and Tyson Fury, and he it's like cricket and batting. You have four, you're in form, out of form. Yeah. Parker's on the up, and he showed with Chisori, he dominated him, put him down three times. He's had 30 odd fights or more, round 20 KO or stoppage finishes. Um, so there's no reason why Joseph Parker couldn't shouldn't finish Joe Joyce on Saturday. When you look at um, Joe Parker and especially the last few fights. Andy Lee seems to have finally got as a, more of a glimpse of what he's all about in terms of in an attacking sense because we know that uh, Joe was very good on, on the back foot, very good jab, but he seems to have unlocked that bit of a spite and a bit of an edge now in Joe. Do you think that could be key coming into this, the fact that yes, uh, Joe Joyce can take a lot of punishment, but how much can he take if he's connecting with him all night long? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's a different Joseph Parker now to the one three four years five years ago that fought Dillian White and Joshua it's a different Joseph Parker it's a far more relaxed calm confident better mastery of the basics coming off a dominant performance so you know there's no reason why Joseph Parker shouldn't rain punches on Joe Joyce and break him down and, and finish him if you were to put your money where your mouth is and I know you'll back your boy how does this fight end I'm going to um, make a big call and I'll, I'll say stoppage to Joseph Parker in round seven or eight. Do you just believe the volume of punches will be too much for Joyce to handle? I do. There'll be a lot of punches landed and some power punches. And, and uh, the other thing is that Joyce won't be used to fighting someone that's calm under the pressure he brings and is landing that many punches so you might see Joyce lose composure or panic a bit and that's when jo Joe could land the, Parker could land a killer punch any worries with this being on the sort of quote unquote away card that if Joe does a, a good performance goes to points and he believes he's won by you know that he has to win nearly every round barring one is there any concern at all with the judges there's always concern I mean we've had some shockers here in the UK we've had the white fights where the, the headbutt knock was called a knockdown against Parker it would have changed the result of the fight it would have been a draw if it wasn't for that we've had the referee in the Anthony Joshua fight pulling Joseph off Joshua. Um, the Chisora fight most recently, Parker put Chisora down three times, dominated. One of the judges had it nearly a draw, the, the, one of the British judges. Yeah, I mean. So, I mean, it's, and so these guys are human, these officials, they make mistakes. But if you see a trend developing, of yeah. course you're going to be concerned. And, and I don't mind talking about it because, you know, there should be a fuss if there's... A bias or even an unconscious bias. Yeah. Absolutely, I completely agree. Right, for Joe to get this victory, obviously, he'll become interim world champion, be knocking on the door again to these huge fights. What do you want to see him do? Is this a case of anybody with the other world title belts, whether it be uh, obviously he's got a close relationship with Tyson Fury, so that makes things a little bit more awkward? But what happens if, say, Tyson becomes undisputed and Joe's got a belt? They'd never fight, surely. They're friends, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, I don't think they'll fight. 
So, but I, I actually think, I believe Tyson when he says he wants to retire. I think he'll do one or two more big fights, maybe Usyk, Joshua, yeah. then he might hang up the gloves. And Parker wants to fight till he's 34 or 5, so that gives Parker a, a few years. Yeah, so I don't think they have to fight each other, nor do they want to. They, they are like brothers. When you look at the heavyweight scene as a whole, there's obviously a new crop coming through, a younger lot like Jared Anderson, but the fight that happened more recently in Saudi Arabia with Usyk and Anthony Joshua, can I get your take on that and what happened post-fight with Anthony Joshua's sort of outburst? I know we've not had a chance, we don't get to catch up an awful lot because you're obviously over the side of the world. What did you make of that whole scenario and how the fight went and obviously what occurred after? Well, I thought Joshua fought way better than the first fight. In fact, Joshua fought well. It was probably one of his better fights. But Usyk is so elite, so slick, it wasn't enough. And I think you saw Joshua damn frustrated, like almost like a sense of entitlement. He couldn't believe that Usyk beat him again when he'd upped his game the way he did. And then, was it throwing toys out of the cot a bit? I don't no, he, uh, he lost his composure. I mean, you've got to offer some sympathy. Joshua is an elite athlete. He's done amazing things I could only dream of. So credit to him for that. But, you know, someone someday might have your number. And in this case, Usyk has had Anthony Joshua's number twice. Um, and styles make fights. It could well be that Joshua could go fight someone else and win the world title again. There's talks of obviously Tyson Fury fighting Anthony Joshua. Um, I think Tyson's put the offer out there. I'm sure when Frank gets here tomorrow, I'll be able to speak to him about that and see where, where we're at. I was heard there's 10% left of the deal done, which in boxing could mean 150% of a deal done in terms of, I think, probably broadcaster issues, but I don't want to speculate. If that fight takes place, what happens? Uh... I, I mean, I'd, I'd have to say Fury wins. For me, he's the best going around at the moment. Just the, the skill, the self-confidence, the footwork, the whole, you know, all of that. He's a, he's like almost like Muhammad Ali of our generation for me. Yeah. So Fury wins, but you never know if luck happens and Joshua lands a big punch, could go the other way. You don't know. Um, I, I mean, if both guys want the fight, it should happen. Yeah. The, the main thing is, does Fury want the fight? Does Joshua want the fight? If the answer is yes, then the next thing is, is the money agreed? And we're, what we're seeing is they've agreed on 60-40. Then the fight should actually happen. Um, it would take some very selfish lawyers or advisors or broadcasters to stop it happening when that hard work is done. But isn't this the problem when one's signed to a contract with his own, the other one's obviously signed to, to BT and there's obviously exclusivity on a lot of this. So Anthony Joshua, from what I can understand from speaking to Eddie, needs DAZN's blessing. Now, are DAZN going to go, I'll tell you what, yeah, you've just signed a multi-fight contract deal. And they do, do a do dual they, broadcast. Yeah, do they share the money or put it on both? I mean, people should put egos aside and con contracts aside and get round the table and make things happen. How much did you enjoy it when you came over here with Joe the last time you had them round table sit down, sit down with Eddie Hearn? You were sort of introduced to the UK public a bit more then. It was good back and forth, good banter. You don't seem to have that, um, you know, with Frank Warren, that, um, I don't know, that needle, that rivalry. Is that just because it's different different personalities, different sort of... Uh, I, don't, I don't think Frank likes me. <laughs> he, probably, no? he probably believes he's too important to, to go on the same... He wants to stay up here, you know, and it's beneath him oh, yeah. to verbally spar with some kid from New Zealand who hasn't done a, a tenth of the number of shows he's done. I don't know, but, you know, the, that was good promotion with Eddie and good banter. And, you know, if we see Frank, there might be some banter, who knows? We'll have to see, it's going to be a long week. But look, David Higgins, thanks for talking to Into Boxing for the first time. Yeah. Hopefully we can catch up before the end of the week and good luck for you, boy, on Saturday. Appreciate your time, thank you.